in the Christmas mood and I know that you probably started your Christmas shopping, uh, budgeting for which events to attend. And mind you, the events this Christmas, they're pretty expensive, you know, you're not looking at less than maybe like a thousand five hundred or okay, maybe like a 800 Ghana CDs per ticket for one event or the other. And if you want to go in a group, there may be like 2,000 Ghana CDs or 4,000 Ghana CDs. You get one bottle here, two chichinga sticks here and a few other things as well. But how do you tell that you're not overspending and how do you save some of the money for 2020? New Year, you need money, especially because January can be one hell of a long month. And so if you're broke, then it becomes a terrible start to a brand new year for you. And so in the studio today, we have Paul Kofi Mante. He's the managing director for EDC Investments Limited Ecobank. And he's joining us here to help us save some money, know how to budget, for Christmas. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. How are you Thank doing? You. I'm good. Are you saying we shouldn't buy anything this Christmas? No, I haven't said so. Okay, so what are we supposed <laughs> to do this Christmas? Um, so we are saying that for most people, January is a very long month. Mm -hmm. um, uh, somebody says January is 51 days. Yeah, and I think it's 60. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, just because we overspend during the festive season. Yeah. Festive season. Mm. So what we are saying is that Let's have a good time. Okay. Let's enjoy it, but let's plan for it. Let's mm. budget for it. It's as simple as I've that. I've worked all year. I've saved up money just yeah. preparing for Christmas. And you yeah. tell me to still be careful during Christmas. Can't I live at least once? So you, you see, if you want to enjoy Christmas, then the planning should have started before December. Okay. So if you have planned and you have budgeted for the Christmas, it's fine. You can go all out and, and, and blow money. Mm -hmm. Um, when we talk about budget, we're yeah. basically talking about income or money available and how you are going to be spending it. Yeah. The major challenge is people spend what they don't have. And if you spend money you don't have, you would have to pay for it yeah. anyway. Yeah. Uh, so most people end up spending future income in January, in December. In December yeah. So after the festive season... Uh, people will still be paying for the enjoyment in January, February, March, April. Mm. We are saying avoid that. So let's plan and spend within budget. It's okay. as simple as that. Okay. And there are a few tips uh, we could consider. Number one is the fact that you need to know how much you can spend okay. within the Christmas. How do I know? I mean, the parties uh, popping up the... It, 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 you shop extra for Christmas? So you, 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 you should know your income and you should know what you have available. At the end of the day, you cannot spend money you don't have. All right. Else you'll be in a deficit. Mm. You need to find money elsewhere to pay for that money. Mm. So you, you should have some limit on how much you want to be spending during this Christmas. If you made provision already, great. If you've not made provision, you should think along that line. Right. Number two is that I, I believe that it's important you get the whole family involved. Right. Um, so if you are married, sit down with your spouse and children and let know how much we want to spend as a family this Christmas. One of the things I would encourage parents to do is never to go shopping with the children without a budget. All right. So you have three children, you have two, you have four. Before you leave home to shopping, agree on a budget at home. Hmm. But the children can get there and decide they want everything all at once. It, they decide when you haven't discussed it. And okay. I'm talking from practical experience. Mm. When you haven't decided, they get to the mall, they see all kinds of things and they want everything. They want everything and yeah. you can't have everything and they cry and. and What's the and, scene? And, uh, you, it can be very frustrating. You know, and yeah. sometimes uh, somebody passing by who does not know the challenges you have. Mm. We we'll go like, oh, but it's Christmas. Yeah. Get something for the children. But if you can sit at home and agree on a budget with the children, that look, you are the firstborn. You have a budget of 500 cities, 1,000 cities, 200 cities. You are the second one. You have a budget of so much. Okay. When you get to the mall or wherever, allow them. Let them run around and let them make their choices. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, and, and practically I've done it um, uh, last Saturday. So we were at the mall, All and right. everybody had their budget. So they shopped according to. Oh yes. Do children ever even understand that? They understand it. We underestimate the intelligence of the children. Oh. So they pick it. They pick the toys and say, "Oh, this is outside my budget," and they drop it. Really? <laughs> I've never heard that. Maybe we should try. It. Yes. 
Okay. And it, it is something I do often, not just for the uh, festive season. Mm. There are situations where we go to the mall. And you know what? The, the boys, who, I have all boys, the boys will come together and say, look, we want to have a negotiation. What is a negotiation? Yeah. We are not spending our budget today. We want to hold on to this budget so that we can add the next budget. Okay. So we can buy what we want to buy. Mm. So get the whole family involved, get the children involved, they can understand it. Number three, we must know that life will continue after the Christmas. Yeah. Life did not end with the 2018 uh, Christmas. Mm. Life will continue. Yeah. If you don't get this straight, January will be a long month for you. What do we spend on? Some of the things we spend on are fixed. Some of them are variable. Some of them we can avoid. Let's see what we can avoid and let's cut them out. It's as simple as that. Hmm. Those okay. we can avoid. If you have the money to spend, no problem. Yeah. But even that, I still should be circumspect. Exactly. Of, okay. Exactly. One, one, one of the major things we need to learn to do during this Christmas is to learn to say no. Hmm. That's tough. Yes, if you have to say no, you have to learn to say no. Okay. You, see, you cannot eat your cake and have it. You cannot live your life anyhow during this uh, festive season and expect that January okay. will be 31 months. Mm. It may end up being 131 uh, days. It may end up being 100 days for you. All right. Now, before we even carry on, I want you to help me draw a budget. So let's mm. just say that I earn 2,000 Ghana cities mm. a month. Mm. And so I'm going to be ending that on, probably on the 24th. Mm. If I'm not lucky and I don't get the 13th month, like some people, then that's the only amount that I have for Christmas. So if we're drawing a budget, can you help me break it down? Let's see yes. what we can do with that amount of money. Yeah, so, so when you are drawing a budget, so what I'll do is to try to deal with it beyond just the Christmas okay. into the new year mm -hmm. as well. So I, I recommend, you see, the salary that we are paid, that we think it's our salary, it's not all for, la for us. Mm -hmm. Because out of that salary, your landlord is waiting to take their portion. Yeah. The taxi, the electricity, Ghana, water, yeah. among others. So the salary, the Brazilian and all that. Oh, so, so, <laughs> we won't buy it, don't worry. So the, the salary <laughs> is not all for you. Yeah. There is a law in finance called the, called the Parkinson law. The Parkinson law explains why most people retire poor, mm. even after any substantial income through their working years. The law says that no matter how much people earn, they will tend to spend the entire amount and a little bit more. So as you increase salaries, people will adjust their lifestyles. Mm. So my recommendation in looking at the budget is, number one, you got to pay yourself. When you say pay yourself. So whatever money that comes to you, I recommend 20% of that is not for spending. All right. 20% of that is for your future. 20% of that is for you yourself. Because mm -hmm. don't forget the entire salary is not all for you. Yeah. So I recommend a minimum 20% for your future. And you, you know, uh, we can't run away for retirement. Uh, things like housing, if you have children, children's education. Mm -hmm. Um, among other things, of course, uh, high life, enjoying life, among other things. So 20% is for yourself, is for your future. Is that too high? If you say 20%, if I'm earning 1,000 CDs, and you're telling me to pay myself with 20%, which is not mine, so that's going into what, my savings? That is going into an investment, savings okay. and an okay. investment. Okay. You see, if you're earning 1,000 CDs, you, you will tell me that 200 CDs out of the 1,000 is too much. Mm. Uh, to put away. But the issue is not about the 200. The issue is about a lifestyle. All right. The lifestyle. I did a session with a group and I asked how many of them struggle with their salaries. And almost all the hands yeah. went up. You know what? We so, all do. It's yes, never yes, enough. Yes, yes. So, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so, so, I asked how many of them believe that if their salaries were doubled, doubled, they will live a comfortable life. Okay. All the hands went up mm. again. I said, okay, 10 of you should step out and let's have a conversation. So 10 step out and I gave them pieces of paper and I asked each person to write their current salary for mm. me. You know what? Among the 10, the lowest salary income earner, and this was January... 2019? 2019. All right. The lowest was on a salary of 350 cities. All right. And for some reason, this person believes that when that 350 cities is doubled, they will live a comfortable life. Mm. 
one was on a salary of 1,500. We had one on 5,000. We had one on 11,000. The highest among them was on a 20,000 salary. Mm -hmm. But when I asked those who struggle with their salary, the guy who earns 20,000... He was struggling? Yes, he also How? Lived. He could save like 10,000 Ghana cities every month. It's, a, it's an issue with lifestyle. Okay. As the salary increases, people will adjust their lifestyle. Mm. Don't forget you can buy a jacket for $4,000. Oh, no. Oh, I, I know you will say no, <laughs> but people do. Four thousand dollars. Yes, you can. That's twenty thousand. Yes, about. you can get one perfume. Yeah. For two thousand dollars, for three thousand dollars. So it's an issue with lifestyle. So the issue is not about the salary; it's the principle. Okay. So twenty percent is for you. If Every you be, month. Yes. Hmm. If you want to secure your financial future, it's it's a choice. Okay. If you believe in Titan, 10% is for Titan. If you don't believe in Titan, 10% is for society. Yeah. So we'll restrict our budget to 70%. Okay. So if you earn 2,000, 70% of the 2,000 is going to be 1,400. Now we need to look at which part of our expenditure or expenses is fixed. For example, rent. You can't do much about rent. Mm -hmm. For example, school fees. You cannot do much about school fees. So we'll make provision for those fixed expenses that we can't do much about. All right. Then we will look at the variable expenses, those that are flexible, those that we could change. Mm. And then we look at how we can control and reduce that part of the budget. So it, it's purely an issue of looking at your income and looking at how you are going to be spending your income. So let's say this Christmas I have 2000 That means yes. that almost, what, 50 or 40% already gone because 20 for my, my investments... It, Maybe 10 for... No, so like, like I said, Christmas is one off. Okay. So if it's for just this December, you can give yourself a waiver and pamper yourself. Okay. After all, why do we wake up at dawn? Exactly. Yeah, you know. Let yes. me choose some chicken. Yeah. yeah, but beyond Christmas, it cannot be business as usual. Yeah. That is the point I am making. So how much would you say I should save for January, just in case? Once you start January, then we'll go back to... The 10, 20, 70 principle. Okay, but my Christmas salary, I still need to save some of that for January. Yes. Should I rather direct the 20% to... Oh, so you are, you are getting your salary on the 24th mm -hmm. or let's say 27th or, or whatever. You should know that January is 31 days. Mm -hmm. And you should know if you are paid on, let's say, 24th, then you should know mm -hmm. that the next pay is coming on the 24th of January. Yeah. So you should have an idea what your uh, expenditure pattern is like mm. in January and make provision. I will advise that you put that money away. Okay. And then you spend the rest for the Christmas. So even if I'm getting on the 18th, same Same, process, same principle, yes. Put that. Else, January will be a long month for you. Funny enough, this year, January went by very fast. It, uh, it, it's normal. So we were lucky. Be <laughs> this year went by very fast. I think a lot of people kept asking, how come January went by so fast? Because we expected a very long... Then it's because people did not spend a lot during the Christmas. Ah, so we had enough. Yes, so we, so we had enough, yeah. Yeah, it's when you don't have enough that you are always asking when the next payday is. Are you telling me I can't go for all the parties I want to go for? You can go for all the parties. But they're expensive. How am I yes. going to pay for them? I, I don't know, but I am saying that you have to live, <laughs> you have to live beyond... Okay. Uh, Christmas. It's as simple as that. Wow. Learn to say no. You see, we need to, we need to, uh, let's not confuse needs and then wants. Mm -hmm. Do we need to be at all the parties? Yes. We've worked hard all year. Bella. <laughs> <laughs> let us unwind. Yes. No, we don't so, need so, to. So, so if we've made provision for that, great. Yeah. I, I, don't, I believe in high life. I believe in enjoying. Mm. I, I believe in taking a vacation. But I believe in planning for that. All right. It's as simple as that. Okay. So let's plan for that. Indeed. Let's yes. plan for that. Yes. Um, let's not confuse needs and then wants. Hmm. I'm worried. That means that this Christmas, some of us will not be chilling much. No, but it's okay. let's chill. Okay. You see, let's also not confuse quantity with quality. All right. Explain. So you, you can have one good party, mm -hmm. or you can be at one uh, good program. Yeah. Let it be quality. Enjoy it. it it's, it's not an issue of the number of parties. Mm -hmm. It's an issue with the quality of the party. All right. So let's not confuse the quantities with the quality. Okay, explain to me what you mean by power of little by little and compounding. 
What's that? So beyond beyond uh, Christmas, you see, money is made little by little. Yeah. Money is made little by little, mm -hmm. little by little. And there is something called the power of compounding. Right. What the power of compounding means is when you have invested money and you are not taking the interest on your money, your interest also makes interest. All right. So with time, all your interest would, make it, would be making interest, whilst your principal is also making interest. Mm -hmm. Or the original money you have invested is also making interest. Right. So when you budget and you are making provision for that 20%, beyond the Christmas, let's walk into 2020, mm -hmm. and you are putting away that 20%, and you are investing that 20%, and you are not taking the interest on that 20% okay. every month. Mm -hmm. All the 20% is going to be building interest. And the interest on the investment would also be building interest. Mm. So interest on interest makes interest, and the interest on interest keeps making interest, and your money keeps growing. Okay. That is how you make money. So if you do it well, and I use 100 CDs, for example, um, uh, 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 forgive me, but um, of course, I'm the MD of EDC. Yeah. When I use our fixed income fund as an example, over the last six years, we've generated a return of 22%. Mm. And it's a very conservative fund. So if you are a little more aggressive and you use 24%, 100 CDs every month, just 100 CDs every month, within 20 years, you would have invested 24,000 CDs. Mm -hmm. But that 24,000 would have grown to 523,000 CDs. Mm -hmm. Interest on the 24,000 is 499,000. Within 30 years, you would have invested 36,000. But interest on the 36,000 is 5.3 million Ghana cities. Because all the interest makes interest. Okay. <laughs> You're smiling. Yeah, who and, doesn't like money? <laughs> and I know, when you, when you talk about 20 years, people will tell you that, look, what, what is wrong with you? Yeah. But we were in this country when President Kufo became the president of Ghana. Mm -hmm. This is the 19th year. Hmm. So imagine if we had been saving. Uh, exactly. So we, we are talking about budgeting for the Christmas. But beyond the Christmas, let's budget so that you can find the money to invest. I see. And when you invest, then you can build a fortune. Hmm. So you get to a point where your money works for you. One of the things I have, I, I keep pushing, and you were talking about my shows with Kafui. Yeah, yeah. I, I keep talking about this financial independence. Yeah. When you get to that point where you can live your desired lifestyle without salary, mm -hmm. when you get to that point where you work because you want to work, yeah. you don't work because you need to work, then we say you are financially independent. Mm. But it's not going to happen overnight. It won't happen in one year, five years. I recommend between five years and 25 years, anybody who is disciplined and focused and committed mm. can become financially you independent. You should stop working then. Do you work because you have to work or you work because you want to? At the moment. Yes. Both. Both. Eh? <laughs> we have not hit that, no. that level no. yet. Okay. <laughs> oh, but this is very educative and I hope that we have uh, sounded a bell at least just to remind you of the need to save and invest and also to spend YC this Christmas. I know you want to be everywhere. You want to do everything. You want to eat everything. Yeah. But remember that January comes with 60 days. Yeah. So yeah. learn to save. Yeah. Final, final yeah. words we, before let, we go. Let's not be wasteful this Christmas. Mm. So it, it's important to understand that the season is also an opportunity to give yeah. and not necessarily to waste. So as we think about the parties, Let's also think about the needy in society. Mm. Let's think about the less privileged. Mm. And let's show some love to them. Let's not be wasteful during this Christmas. Let's not throw away the leftover food. Okay. Let's, let's not cook beyond we can consume. Mm. Let's, let's not be wasteful. It's All important. Right. Else January is going to be a very long month. Definitely. David Chilton, the world of says, if you want to see the benefit of a tree, the best time you should have planted that tree was 20 years ago. Okay. If you didn't do it at that time, the next best time you need to plant it is no. today. Yeah. And we say that, look, if you didn't start financial planning early, the next best time is today. No. Don't go into 2020 without a financial plan. Definitely. And on those tidbits, I guess that I've been speaking to Paul 
Kofi Mante. He is the managing director for EDC Investments Limited, Ecobank. Thank you so much for those nuggets of wisdom. <laughs> Thank you, Bella. Um, yeah, you just are working something in me. I have to <laughs> invest again. Harry, don't worry. I'm investing some $50,000 in your account for you, darling. You don't have a problem. Anyway, so it's